In order to draw circuit diagrams, we need to know what the different components do and the symbols that we use to represent them. So in today's video, we'll quickly explore all of the main symbols that you need to know about. To provide electric power to a circuit, we need either a cell or a battery. And to control the flow of the electricity, we could also add a switch, which can be closed, allowing electricity to flow, or open, which effectively turns off the circuit because it's no longer complete. We also have filament lamps, which are just small bulbs, fuses, which break if too much current flows through the circuit, and diodes, which only allow current to flow in one direction. A special type of diode is the light emitting diode, or LED, which emits light when current flows through in the forward direction. These are the ones you see in things like alarm clocks, traffic lights, and new LED bulbs. To measure things in our circuit, we have ammeters, which measure current and are connected in series, and voltmeters, which measure potential difference and are added in parallel. Finally, we have resistors, of which there are a few types to know. Basic resistors can be fixed to provide a certain number of ohms worth of resistance, or can be variable, so that we can easily modify the amount of resistance they provide. Meanwhile, light-dependent resistors, which we can call LDRs, and thermistors are both a bit more complicated. So from now on, we'll focus just on these two. As you can see on the graph here, an LDR is just a resistor whose resistance is dependent on the intensity of light. So in bright light environments, there's very low resistance, meaning lots of current can flow. While in darkness, the resistance is so high that hardly any current can flow. This property is really handy and means that we can use LDRs in things like automatic nightlights and burglar alarms. For example, if somebody switches on a light or uses a torch, then the light will be detected by the LDR, causing the resistance to drop and allowing more current to flow, which could then power the alarm. Meanwhile, the resistance of thermistors is dependent on the temperature, with higher temperatures causing the resistance to fall and lower temperatures increasing the resistance. This makes them useful temperature receptors in things like car engines and electronic thermostats. Anyway, that's it for this video. So if you found it useful, then please do share it with your friends. But otherwise, we'll see you next time.